Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to be watching and reacting to the video Windsor Castle Tour, the Queen's Royal Residence. So this is by Ultimate Bucket List. I don't think I've watched a video by these people yet. So I recently watched a video of the, something along the lines of the top 10 royal residences of the Queen throughout the UK. And this was my favorite. I asked the question in that video of, out of all those 10 or eight or whatever it was, residences of the queen, which one would, would you choose to, to be like yours or you could stay in for a week? And this was my pick. I love anything that, that looks like a castle. And this thing is absolutely massive. I love the little garden, as in not little, the very big garden in the front and, and all in the middle of the castle looks phenomenal and this would definitely be my pick if I could say stay for a weekend for example just a tour the interior exterior the grounds in general and hopefully a little bit of history at least uh, behind it so let's see let's let's jump in and uh, see what this is all about Windsor Castle my favorite a lot of people will know that the Queen lives in Buckingham Palace in the center of London Buckingham, yep. but she doesn't consider that her home Buckingham Palace is officially her office, and she considers Windsor Castle, which is 23 miles west of London. Just look at that. Look how cool that is. And I meant to go here. We, we wanted to go here when I was here in 2018, but I hardly got out of London because there's just so much there, and I was there for only a couple of days. So I cannot wait to go back and tour Windsor Castle. I'll be in awe the whole time. London, her actual home. This is where she grew up, and this is where she prefers to spend her weekends. Amazing. It's one of the most amazing castles you'll come across here in England, and lots of important things have happened here. Most recently, the wedding between Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Mm, I bet you guys all love her. I didn't know it was actually at this castle. I know that Kate and William were at Westminster Abbey, I believe. Most of the time, the Queen isn't in residence here, and you're free to pay for a tour of the place. Yes, I want to do that. My day starts here at Windsor and Eaton Central train station, aka the Royal train station. And you can immediately tell that it's that because, well, the Royal train's on display, but also there are various signs that tell you so. Windsor Castle is pretty easy to find. You exit the train station and whoop, there it is. It's a massive, imposing castle. The camera angle really doesn't do it justice here. It is massive. With it being a royal residence, not only is it guarded by these guys, it's also guarded by these guys. So no misbehaving whilst you're here. Yeah. The front of the castle has some excellent photo opportunities. And to go into the castle itself, you'll need to go into the visitor's entrance right here on the corner. Even if you book in advance, the queue to get in is literally a mile long. Even though the members of staff here are very likeable and very friendly, sometimes you'll come across complete tools who also want to see the castle. You're ushered around the corner where you'll be security checked, airport styley, before being allowed to enter the castle. And as soon as you walk in, you'll realize how big this place actually is. There's plenty of photo opportunities everywhere because this is one of the nicest castles that you can visit. There's plenty of history at every turn. Okay, got that point, but did they like add on to it or make the walls way later or just kind of make it more fancy later on? Or has it, was it just boom, this is it. This was the thing that was built so long ago. I'm assuming it's just kind of some of the buildings inside and they just slowly expanded it uh, throughout time. Kind of like the Tower of London, that, that whole area was just throughout king and queen that just kind of added on here and there. Remove Before things. you enter anywhere though, I highly recommend that you pick up an audio guide here on the left. It's available in many languages. When you get to a specific station, press on the button and it'll tell you all about it. And yes, this is actually how you enter Windsor Castle. That's it's awesome. pretty damn amazing. Yeah. So pay attention to the audio guide because you actually learn a lot about the castle and ooh, look at these guys. They're actually on patrol today. Usually, they do a changing of the guard ceremony at 11 o'clock most days. But because of COVID-19, unfortunately, they've stopped doing that. The biggest tower I here love at seeing those guys. is the Round Tower. Unfortunately, because of COVID, they're not running any tours up there. 
but hopefully when you come round, this place will actually be open. Instead, have a walk around one of the Queen's gardens. It's actually quite pleasant to know that Queen Elizabeth enjoys walking around in her garden. Once you've walked around the Round Tower, like it. you've got two options. You can either turn left to go into St. George's Chapel, or right to go into the State Apartments. I decided to go left and visit St. George's Chapel. It's crazy. It's just, it's a city. It's like this micro nation almost it kind of reminds me a way of like vatican city kind of have all of these different aspects about it these different buildings these different functions and i'm sure a ton of employees a crazy amount of people that work there for many reasons to to maintain the yard or um just just for the queen to run the state i'm not i'm not sure exactly what is there i have to do a deeper dive in there and hopefully I can find a video about that but yeah it reminds me roughly of kind of like a Vatican City type of scenario it's it's like a city on its own this is the on-site church that's used for ceremonies and was the venue for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding so if you're a big fan of royals and royal weddings this is quite a nice place to go the courtyard itself, as you can imagine from being a royal resident, actually That's very nice and amazing. boy, there's a lot of planes flying overhead today. I recommend spending some time in the courtyard because you'll see the Queen's Guards on display. Contrary to popular belief, they are allowed to move and if you do bother them, they will retaliate. So don't be a typical tourist and try and bother them. They're there to do a job. Yeah, thankfully they have kind of barriers between them nowadays it seems like because so many people that that almost became a thing and more of like i don't know I, tourists are dumb a lot of times thankfully it's a very rare occasion that they will mess with them but it does happen and i'm sure it happens more often than i know but yeah th these guys were really entertaining to see because you've i've grown up seeing them in so many movies and shows and then to see them in real life is it's like a it is like a character almost that you see but i know they're there for their very serious job function of you know protecting windsor castle or the queen whatever they're doing at the time so they are on duty but cool to see Having i like that this isn't a bad view to stare at all day mm -mm. up the ramp you go and into st george's chapel as soon as you walk through the doors you'll step into Massive. one of the nicest churches that you'll have ever seen i mean check out the detail in the ceiling there's that's not incredible. a bad view anywhere in the church it's ornately so does anyone know what what all of these are are they different houses or counties i'm sure i'm wrong but is what is it i always find that part very fascinating because it's very specific to whatever country you're in then they explain it to you and you're like oh that makes complete sense i get it now i mean check out the detail in the ceiling there's not a bad it. view anywhere in the church mm -mm. it's ornately carved very gothic style and the fact that this is frequented by the queen herself is pretty pretty amazing every single detail here in st george's chapel is there for a reason the coat of arms are there for a reason and the audio guide does an excellent job in explaining what generally goes on in here so the nicest part of St. George's Chapel is this, the choir, where the choir sits and where the ceremonies happen. It looks like something out of a fairy tale. Most people- Yeah, that does, the, for an American, absolutely looks like something out of a fairy tale. It's incredible. The detail, everywhere you, just look anywhere, just throw your eyes anywhere and there's gonna be an like a crazy amount of detail there that I'm sure has a massive history behind it as well. And that's why I love, I love anything about just, just history in general, but especially anywhere in the UK and, and, and Europe, just that whole, whole area. People Incredible. would have heard of King Henry VIII, one of our most infamous and fattest monarchs. Well, he's buried literally right here, underneath this slab of stone oh. between both sets of choirs. Weird. Cool. Take your time to wander around St. Like George's it. Chapel because it's probably one of the nicer churches or cathedrals that you'll have ever seen. Mm -hmm. By the way, the red doors here, that's the Queen's personal entrance into the chapel. Wow. Once you've finished with St. George's Chapel, it's time to go around the corner and check out the state residences. If you do like your photography, you'll have no shortage of things to take pictures of here. At I the moment, be because there. of COVID, 
It takes a while to get in, but once you're in, there's interesting details everywhere. The first stop is the very, very famous Long Walk. That looks so nice. Oh no, I want to look at there's that. There's interesting details everywhere. It's like an armory everywhere. in there too. The first stop is the very, very famous Long Walk. Wow. Have you done uh, done the long walk before? Because I would definitely do that long walk. I love walking. I love hiking. Uh, this looks so fun to me, especially coming up on such a magnificent historical building like this in the distance and just get closer and closer. I would be there. I will be there someday. As you walk around some of the residences, you'll find some very interesting things, Ooh. like ornately decorated knight's armor, and you go up the stairs very towards ornately. the grand vestibule. This is decorated with famous armor from former monarchs and famous weapons of various knights, which is pretty awesome. Part of the Grand Vestibule houses the statue of Queen Victoria, but it also houses some very interesting artifacts from around the world. So the audio guide tells you pretty much all about it. It's an immense room to... That's just so cool. I, lo I love anything with armor, armories as well, armor. Um, especially historical armor, like when I was in the White Tower. They have so much there that was, I couldn't even believe that was real. I mean, I believed it, but it was just stunning to me to see that it was just real. This was their actual armor. This is the kids' armor. Just, and how ornate, like you said before, and detailed everything is. Start out in. Your country, I'm this telling you. It looks like it's currently under construction, because it is, is the Waterloo Chamber. This acts like a de facto dining room for some of the royals, but it's also a meeting room for very important people. Currently, they're renovating it, but this is what it should look like in general. The next stop is the Garter Throne Room. Windsor Castle is home to the Order of the Garter, the most exalted level of knighthood that you can receive in this country. And wow. if you are awarded the Order of the Garter, it's done right here, with the Queen sitting in that middle chair there, and you being knighted in front. So what's, what are those, if you were knighted and, and this high up in this kind of order, what are your functions? Like, are you, are you expected to do something? Are they well known? Or are they kind of just, you, people don't know who they are really? I, I, I've never really heard of this before. In another life, I feel like I would definitely want to be in one of those chairs. It sounds amazing. The throne room itself is incredibly impressive, and it would be amazing to be knighted in front of the Queen here. Absolutely. Throughout all of the rooms here at Windsor Castle, you'll notice that no detail and no expense has been spared in making this place look mm. spectacular. It literally is fit for royalty. Next up is my favourite room of the entire castle. Like this coat of is arms. the state dining room, complete with coats of arms in the ceilings, various knight armors, and this is used as a state dining room to house royals from across the world. I mean, what a fantastic venue that you can have dinner yeah. in. Yeah. Just look at the I know I keep going back, but I just, here. if and I was watching this video just, on my own, I would just be pausing it and just sitting here, sitting back and just soaking it all in. That's kind of what you have to do to... That's what I do when I'm there. You try to soak it all in and really stand there, look around, look at all the detail, really take your time with these things and you'll appreciate it more and more. Thank yourself for staying so long in each room. Just, just imagine being invited to this room and how impressed you would be sitting at this room, especially if the queen was there at the end of the table. Incredible. Fantastic venue that you can have dinner in. Just look at the amount of detail here. It's absolutely incredible. This is easily one of the nicest royal rooms that I've ever been in. And I've been to quite a lot of castles, etc. But nothing is as nice as this. I've mentioned the Order of the Garter already in this video. And this is it. This is the highest honor that you can be bestowed by the Queen. And I think this is the Queen's actual garter. You also get yeah, I want to know what they do and uh, how people become become them, really. And is that what you wear? Visit the Queen's Presence Chamber and the Queen's Guard Chamber, which are equally as impressive. It's time to go back out to the Grand Vestibule, and I recommend that you stick around for about five minutes to examine literally everything. Yeah. Including the Queen's personal cutlery. Yes, this is the cutlery that she uses to entertain dignitaries. 
You then exit the building where you'll exit out into the Queen's personal courtyard. And yes, it's guarded by the Queen's Guard, and yes, for some reason, jumbo jets are still flying over it. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to go into any other parts of the castle. But to be honest, after you've seen all of this, you're absolutely mesmerized by it yeah. all. Be sure to take a look at the Middle Ward gift shop before you hand back in your audio guide and exit out of the side of the castle. And if you want to check out some of the Queen's Guards again, you definitely can do that. And remember, no trying to make them laugh. Because believe it or not, if they're caught doing so, they get Dr. Weeks wages, so please don't try and bother them. But not everything is old yeah. in Windsor. The town itself has modern amenities. It has a modern high street and they've got modern eateries. And there's no shortage of places where you can buy typical souvenir tack. Including this place with Mr. Bean in front of it. Mr. Bean greets you. There's other cool things to check out, such as the Theatre Royal, the Guild Hall, and the Long Walk. That's I mentioned what I the Long do. Walk before, is where the Royal Procession happens and goes directly into Windsor Castle. But it's three miles long, and most of it is in public parkland, Easy. which you can actually walk along. So behind me is Windsor Castle, and in front of me is this famous long walk. Now, apparently, it's about four kilometers long, which is about three miles. And you can walk to the end of it if you want to. <laughs> Screw that. But overall, guys, I highly recommend a trip to Windsor Castle, especially if you like history, royalty, or you want something fun to explore and a nice day out All of the above. central London. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well, you need to come here to Windsor Castle. It's situated in the town of Windsor, and to get here, you can either drive, there's plenty of parking, or take the train directly from London. I had to change at Slough this morning to get here, but Windsor train station is actually quite nice to have a look at. The cost to do the tour? Well, it costs about £23, and for that, you also get this free cool audio guide, which I highly recommend. Is there anything else I need Yeah, that's to worth it. Yes. They're very twitchy about photography here, at Winter Castle, so bearing in mind no photography or videography in certain parts of the castle. And also, no droning here. You're in the direct flight path of Heathrow Airport, and you're at a royal residence that's heavily guarded. So there's no way that you absolutely get away with this. So no droning, guys. But if you have enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Comment on the comment section below, and if you've got any other bucket list ideas you want me to check out, tweet them at me. Yeah, that, I thought that was very good. That was more informative than I've... That was more information than I've ever known about Windsor Castle. And the £23 for for a, for adults to get in there is not bad at all. That's, that's, what, like $30 or something like that. So very worth it, in my opinion. And it comes with that audio tour, which is fantastic. That's exactly what I like. I like more self-tours like that at times. So, certain places I do like someone touring you around a tour guide, but for the most part, I like doing it on my own, on my own pace, go to the places that you want to go as, for as long as you can. So that's perfect. The castle, it seems like wherever you go, whatever door you enter or exit, it's just amazing. Like what you're looking at is going to be spectacular. It's going to be something new every time. You've never seen anything like it before. Uh, depending, no, no matter where you are, you could walk into a random field. You could go on the the four what four kilometer hike. It's just perfect. It's it's everything I ever wanted, and I'm definitely going to go here. It's one of those places that seems like you will absolutely need a day at to really really take everything in. Um, especially with the guided tour. And what's at the end of that three mile, four kilometer hike, the long the long hike there? Is there anything at the end of it? Is it, is it the town or more of the town that's there? I wanna know, have you been here before? And, and what's it like, what was your experience? Were you, I would be blown away at everything that I saw. That would be my experience. Everywhere I'd look, I'd be taking pictures, except for the places you can't, of course. And, and videos to remember it, but I'd mainly just like to stand in those rooms, just kind of, you know, absorb everything and try to understand everything from the guided tours. But yeah, definitely let me know if you've been here before, how, how popular it is to, to go. Maybe everyone has been here. Until next time, thank you for watching. Thanks for going on this tour of Windsor Castle. I'm, gonna, I'm going to be 
kind of watching more and learning more about Windsor in general, because I'm so fascinated with this and other palaces and residents of the Queen and the Royals in general. And until next time, thanks for watching and uh, have a good rest of your day.